Hello, good day. Welcome back to Nat. And this is part 15. We're going to conclude Jetstream by using the very last thing that we get from Jetstream in terms of feature, and that is the object store. In this video, I'll show you a little bit of code in Go. Very simple bit of code, actually. How to use the Nat object store to upload a file from Go or to get a file. Okay, so let's jump in. So here I am at um, the NATS documentation, and this is in the section for developing with NATS. Um, so remember, up at the top, there is the concept section and tell you, for example, what object store is. We went through that already, and we use NATS from the command line. Now we're going into developing with NATS, and so let's jump down here to object store. And notice, unlike um, key value store, where we had quite a number of examples in different languages and you know a nice um, clearly se separation of the different capabilities. We don't quite have quite as good documentation in Go. And part of the reason for that is that Object Store is still considered experimental and this is just a preview, which means a lot can change in terms of the interface, right? So if you're gonna be building a solution with NAT Jetstream and you want to use Object Store, be sure that you're willing to, you know, potentially break your source code if you, um, if the new version of NATS changes how object store work, not key value store. Key value store is not in preview, but object store is. Okay. With that said, we do have enough sort of from the interface um, that is defined in terms of what uh, um, methods you can call. And you can see there's this one that says object store, which binds and looks up an object store, given a string, and then this, this is called a bucket, by the way. And you get back an object store, and that's the thing that you can use to then put and delete and remove things from the object store. You can then use um, create object store to create an object store. All right, and then once you have an object store, so once you either bind it or create it one, then you can use these different methods, right? So, you know, um, Put some data in using any I.O. reader um, or get some data. Um, the one we're going to use, um, the very convenient, put file and get file. It is that easy. So let's jump directly to the command line and let me show you how it's used and then we'll come back and look at the code. So I have Jetstream running already. And so I have a object store and I'm running my NATS object list command. And you can see I have a store called songs. It's never been used. And I'm going to list the files in that, uh, or the objects in that um, store. So if we look here in my NATS um, example, episode 15 directory, I have a source code, and I have a music directory, and I can list the files in the music directory. And there they are. Okay, and so let's say, um, let's just compile my program. So I'll say go build. And if I do ls, I get awesome now. And so I can say awesome. And it supports two, basically two operations. Now, of course, I still have, you know, the arguments for you to be able to configure um, which NAS server you connect into. But we're going to run that locally, so I don't need that. And so if I run it like this, without anything, you can see error, missing argument. Use either put and then the store name and then the file, or use get store and then the file and then the destination. Now, what's different about our application is that I allow you to get a file and specify the name of the file in object store and then the name that you want to store it locally on your file system. The Built-in NATS CLI command doesn't allow you to specify the destination file name. So when you get a file, the same name that is in the store is the same name that it stores it on a computer. And maybe you might tell you, you might sometimes you might want a different name. I'll show you why. Okay, so let's just clean up and run again. So let's do awesome. And I'll do put. And let's just say I want to put this into the songs. Um, store and my music file is let's do um, this guy 
you'll see that it was successfully um, stored or uploaded into NAT's object store. Now, of course, we can certainly put other files. So, you know, you can do Kaya and work just as easily. Very, very easy. And so let's just get one of our files now. And so easily, let's just get this guy. And remember, um, the format the way we're using our command is get from this store this file, and I want to store it locally as a new file. So let's just call it file1.mp3. Okay. Now, if I do ls, I have this file now called file1.mp3. What you might, the reason why you might want to get it to a different name, maybe you might want to compare it or something like that. So if I do mv5 and then I do, let's say, file1.mp3 and music slash Kaya is what I uploaded previously, you'll see that both files have the same checksum. So this tells me, in fact, that they are both identical down to the byte. Every single byte is identical. So, okay, let's, uh, let me remove um, file one, I don't need it anymore. And let's go take a look now at the code to see how this was written. Notice from what we had before, ignoring imports, nothing there changed. I simply have two strings here that I'm gonna use for help. This is what you saw when I run the command. Let's clean up if I were to run, awesome. By itself like this, you saw it says, Missing arguments use either put string so and so or get, and that's part of the help that you get. Nothing changed in the variable that we had defined for username, password, and other stuff, and for the flags. The only thing that changed is within main, I check and see if the number of arguments after the flag package has processed the arguments is zero. It means nothing was passed other than arguments. Okay, because you don't want to use os.arg here because os.arg would give you back some of these values if they were passed in. So you want to use flag that args. And if you read this, it says args returns the non flag command line arguments. If it's zero, that's why you see that message. Now, other than that, we just run our application. Now, what does running the application entails? Well, it entails all the stuff we were doing before. So all this stuff is the same old boring stuff we were doing before. Connecting to that, getting a jet stream context. Once we get a jet stream context, now we, if that's successful, now we have to make some decision. Well, like I said, if we look at the format of this, we'll see the first non flag argument here is going to be whatever operation we want to perform. So this is going to become arg0. Arg1 is going to be the object store name we want to use. Arg Two is going to be the file that we are either going to be putting into object store or are we going to be getting from the object store. And only if we are doing a get, then arc three is going to be the destination. So again, these are arguments. So it's um, zero base index in zero, one, two, and three. Okay. So with that in mind, we can just jump down to the important part. So everything new is essentially here. And so, like I said, the first argument, arg0, is the operation, whether you want to put or get a file from the object store. If it's empty, we say missing argument, and we print out our same help message as before. Um, we then try to get the store, which is the argument, argument 1. And that's our object store name. Now, we could check and see if this is 0 also. But the reason I don't check is because if we try to bind to whatever up store name is given, including the empty string, if there's no store we can bind to, that's our error. So there's no reason to really check this explicitly because we're doing it indirectly in the fact that if it doesn't exist when we try to bind to it, well, that's our error. And so you can see I'm using jetstream that object store and just giving the string to say bind to that object store and returns the object store an error. Now, the only difference with what we're doing here um, with what we did in a previous example is we tried to create an object store. And so that's easy if it doesn't exist, right? We did the, you know, like that. we did something like this. And instead of binding to object store, we did create and 
we can create the object store and we can see this takes a pointer to a NATS object store config value, which pointer to NATS config object store value. And if we do this, and then we go back and check, what do we need to pass in? We need to pass in the, what I still call a bucket, even though we're dealing with the object store. So you can see these things are just built on top of each other. And we could pass a description of a few things, but the only thing we really need to pass in is the bucket. So if we say bucket, and we give it object store name as the name, then we can check and see if this is nil, then we try to bind to it. So if we can create it, then we bind to it. The other way is we can try to look it up, and then if we fail, then try to create it. So we can reverse these if we want to. It doesn't really matter either way. We try to look it up first. If we can't look it up, then we try to create it. If we can't do either, then we can say we fail to buying or create. Once we have the object store, remember we have the operation we want to do, store in operation. We have the object store at this point, either created or bounded to. And so all we have to do is do a switch on whether we're going to be putting something in the object store or getting something. And like I said, we're using the very convenient method um, on the object store that we get back from NATS to say, put this file. And that is going to be R2. Again, I'm not checking that R2 is empty because if there's no file or valid file name or we can't read the file or anything like that, this is going to fail. Now, I don't check any error message, but we can easily, you know, check the error message and then return that. Um, I don't care about the first value that's been returned. Let's see, get file. Get file only returns an error. So there we go. So now we have covered our cases where we try to put a file or get a file and it results in an error. And that's it. This is all easy it is to put file and get a file. So that's the code. Um, thanks for your time. I, I'm going to stop it here. Like I said, this is going to be really short. I really love NATS, if you can tell. It's very capable and it's so simple to use. I've used other type of technologies that are similar to technologies and they're just so much harder. Please try it. Let me know if you have any errors or problems or you have questions. Um, let me know how you see using something like this um, in your application. Have you given some thought to how you, you're going to use NATS since you've seen some of the features with streams and subjects and all that stuff? Have you thought about how you can use this? Let me know in the comments below. If you're not a subscriber and you've reached this far in the video, please consider being a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and for coming back. Really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. Take care. See you in the next video. Be safe. Bye.